Kat here to have a further look at arrays with you. Because arrays have um, lists of information, one of the things that we often like to do with them is to search for a particular item. Let's say we have an integer array with the values 6, 7, 9, 12 and 4. They then have indexes of 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Some things we need to keep track of along the way are the index that we're currently looking at, the item that we're searching for, and whether or not it has been found. Obviously the index is an int because it's numbers. The search item in this case is also an int because it's an integer array and found is a true or false value. So before we start searching, we need to know which item we're searching for. We're going to search for the number 9. Before we start searching, found is most obviously going to be false. And when we start searching an array, we have to start searching at the beginning, so our index starts at 0. Just to also make a note, we want to keep searching the array until the item is found or the or we finish searching through the array and the item is not found at all. Okay, so our actual search algorithm is basically saying we're going to keep looking until we find it or we hit the end. So what we do is we start at index 0 and we say, is this the item that we are looking for? So is 6 the same as 9? No, it's not. Found, uh, found keeps its value of false and we increment our index to 1. We then look at position 1 and we say, is this our search item? Again, it's not, so found stays as false and we increment our index to 2. We have a look at item 2. Is this the same as our search item? Yes, it is. So we change our found variable to true and the loop will finish. Because we are searching based on whether or not we find the item or have finished searching the array, we need to use a while loop and not a for loop. So let's have a look at Eclipse as to how we would actually code this one. So in Eclipse, in my arrays project, I've created a new class called Array Searching, and that's a blank template just like everything else. So looking back at what we did before, we said we would need a loop counter, so int i equals 0. We said we needed a boolean to determine when the item was found, so we're going to call that boolean found, and it's going to start off as being false. We're then also going to have an int that was the search item, and we were searching for the number 9. And of course we need our array, so I'm actually going to give you a a bit of a shorthand version for how to create an array. I can say int square brackets, I'm calling my list, equals, and then in the curly braces, I can have all my array items. So I've got 6, 7, 9, 12, and 4. So remember that it depends on what your array is as to which style is better, um, but this is a nice little quick and easy way to do it. We don't need to put anything in, in it in this case, <clears throat> and we're ready for our loop. <coughs> so as I said, it's a while loop. A for loop will count through every item regardless, and we want this loop to be able to terminate if it finds the item, and if it doesn't, we then want it to search through everything. So the while loop is going to be more effective. So we type in while, and then in the brackets, we need to test firstly um, that we haven't, whether or not we've finished searching the entire array. 
So we ask if i is less than list.length. And we want to say that we'll continue searching while found is false. So this is saying keep searching while we haven't hit the end of the array and while we haven't found the item. So an and, double ampersand there, this says that for this to be true, both of these statements have to be true. Okay, so an and is when both are true the full answer is true. Okay, so inside our loop, our question is, is the item we're currently looking at the same as the search item? And we can do that in an if statement because it's a true or false question. So we're saying if list at position i is equal to the search item, then the item has been found. So inside our curly braces, we set found as true. But, if it wasn't found, then we want our loop counter to increase in value so that we can continue looping by looking at the next value. That's all our basic loop is, and this should run no hassles, but again, we generally like to have some user feedback so we can know whether or not it actually does what we think it's doing. So this if else is a block within our program. This while loop is also a block. Now if we want to use an if statement to provide user feedback if it was found or not found, we have to do that outside the while. So if you line everything up nicely, you should see that the while starts here and ends here. So then we go just down from that close brace. So we're going to put in a bracket here and say if found is equal to true, oops, curly braces, then we want to have a draw string that will give the user some feedback. And we might say the search item was found. Remembering that you could, you know, add on more information if you wanted to. Okay, and if it was not found, we also want to put out a drawstring saying it was not found. So let's copy that and say was not found. So let's run this one. We were searching for 9. 9 is in the array, so it should tell us that the search item was found. The search item was found. Now to test whether or not it'll work if the item is not in there, we just go up to the top of the code and change that to a number that is not in the array, like 10 for example, and we'll run it again. And it says that the search item was not found. If you wanted to play with this a little bit more, you could also put in a text field and a prompt for a user asking them to enter an item. And you take that user input, assign it to search item, and search based on that. But this is a basic search that you can then tweak to apply to whatever scenario you are working with.